Good morning, students and teachers. Today, we will be talking about chemical bonding. Before we go to our topic, let me introduce myself first. I am Privilen Eritrea, math and science teacher, and recently graduated from University of the Philippines, Los Banos, with a degree of BS math and science teaching, major in chemistry. I am now a senior high school teacher in chemistry at Malayan Colleges, Laguna, and a curator for chemistry and physics at Filipino Science Hub. Today, we will be talking about chemical bonding. Here is the content standard of this lesson. The learners demonstrate understanding of how atoms combined with other atoms by transferring or by sharing electrons. Most essential learning competency would be recognizing different types of compounds, ionic or covalent, based on their properties such as melting point, hardness, polarity, and electrical and thermal conductivity. The outer shell of many atoms, hydrogen being exemption, holds eight electrons. Atoms that have an eight electrons are considered chemically stable. So meaning to say, here, flash on the screen, this is a stable atom because it has eight electrons on its valence shell. We often say they fulfill what is called the octet rule. Most elements follow the octet rule in chemical bonding, which means that an element should have a contact to eight valence electrons in a bond or exactly fill up its valence shell. Having eight electrons total ensures that the atom is stable. When atoms combine to form compounds, they can give up, accept, or share electrons in order to assemble an octet of electrons in their outer shell. So a covalent bond is formed when atoms share electrons. So covalent bonding, it is the process of sharing of electrons between two atoms. For example, you have a carbon atom and it holds four electrons in its outer shell, but it would be much more stable with eight electrons. To gain additional four, the carbon can share with other atoms and thereby have completed outer shell. If one carbon and four hydrogen atoms come together and share their electrons, carbon will achieve octet of electrons. Note that in each compound achieves two electrons in the hydrogen atoms. And this is the stable configuration for the first electron shell. There are two types of polar covalent bonding. First is the polar covalent bond. So this is the type of covalent bond exists where an equal sharing of electrons occur due to the difference in the electronegativity of combining atoms. More electronegative atom will have a stronger pool of electrons. The electronegativity difference between the atom is greater than zero and less than two. As a result, the shared pair of electrons will be closer to the atom. Also, we have nonpolar covalent bond. This type of covalent bond is formed whenever there is an equal share of electrons between atoms. The electronegativity difference between two atoms is zero. It occurs wherever the combining atoms have similar electron affinity. So this is an example of a polar covalent bond, and this is an example of non-polar covalent bond. We also have types of covalent bond based on the number of shared electron pairs. And these are classified into single bond, double bond, and triple covalent bond. For the single bond, it is formed when only one pair of electron is shared between two participating atoms. It is represented by dosh, although this form of covalent bond has a smaller density and is weaker than the double and triple bond, this is the most stable. For example, you have their HCl molecule, which has one hydrogen atom with one valence electron, 
and one chlorine atom with seven valence electrons. In this case, a single bond is formed between hydrogen and chlorine by sharing one electron. Now, let's go to double bond. A double bond, it is formed when two pairs of electrons are shared between two participating atoms. It is represented by two dashes. Double covalent bonds are much stronger than a single bond, but they are less stable. For example, you have here a carbon dioxide molecule that has one carbon atom with six valence electrons and two oxygen atom with four valence electrons. To complete its octet, carbon shares two of its valence with one oxygen atom and with another oxygen atom. Each oxygen atom share its two electrons with carbon and therefore the two double bonds in carbon dioxide. Now, now let's go to the triple bond. So a triple bond is formed when three pairs of electrons are shared between two participating atoms. Triple covalent bonds are represented with three dashes and are the least stable type of covalent bond. In this example, you have here the formation of nitrogen molecule. Each nitrogen atoms have five valence, provides three electrons to form electron pairing pairs for sharing. Thus, a triple bond is formed between two nitrogen atoms. Now, let's go to ionic bonding. Ionic bonding is, is the process of not sharing electrons between two atoms. So given, for example, you have sodium and chlorine, as we all know, the valence electron of sodium is 1, while for the chlorine, it's 7. An ionic bond forms when two atoms are held together by the attraction between the opposite charge and the reaction between sodium and chlorine is an example of how a ionic bond is formed. Since, um, since the sodium has only one electron in the third shell, as you can see here, you only have one electron on the third shell, it has the tendency to give up an electron. And once it does, the remaining outer, the remaining outer electrons for the outer shell will be eight. So this loss of electron gives sodium a slightly positive charge. Chlorine, on the other hand, tends to gain an electron since the outermost shell has seven electrons. And when chlorine gains an electron, it becomes slightly negative. So the charge sodium and chlorine atoms are called ions. Ions of opposite charge attract each other and form an ionic bond. In this case, the attraction of sodium and chlorine form a molecule called sodium chloride or table salt. This is the difference between covalent and ionic. As you can see, for covalent, you are sharing electrons and for ionic bond, you are transferring an electron to form positive ion and negative ion. Also, you have here difference between the covalent bonds and ionic bonds in terms of its properties. A covalent bond is formed between two similar electronegative nonmetals, while for ionic, this is the type of bond which is formed between a metal and nonmetal. Bonds formed from covalent bond have a definite shape, while for ionic bond, it has no definite shape. Covalent bond, it has a low boiling point and melting point, while for ionic, it has a high melting point and high boiling point. Covalent bond, it has a low polarity and more flammable, while for ionic, it is high, it has a high polarity and less flammable. Covalent bonds are in liquid and gaseous state at a room temperature, while for ionic, 
at a room temperature, a unit have a solid state. So here are the following examples for covalent and a unit. Okay, so for you to be able to answer the following, you must um, recall the topic that we have first. And so we have to identify the following, whether it is a unique covalent or its type. And this is the references for this learning module. Thank you so much for listening.